Ghost placement or hologram shaders are extremely effective tools to communicate to your player that this thing is gonna be placed here. In this video, we're gonna make a customizable hologram or ghost placement shader that you can use in your game to communicate things like, I'm gonna place a unit or a building here or any other number of things. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy. Here to help you. Who, me? Yes, you. Make your game dev dream become a reality by helping you make a more immersive game with shaders. Seriously, they're not that hard once you get into them. Hologram shaders are made of really two core parts. One is the outer glow edge effect thing, and the second is the scan lines that are moving up or down. That edge glow is called the Fresnel effect, not Fresnel, which is maybe what I used to say. And the scan lines are something that we can do pretty easily with a scrolling UV or procedurally with some fancy shader math that Unity actually gives us for free. But you can use a custom texture and do basically the same thing with a scrolling UV. With a custom texture, you get more control over how those scan lines look a little bit more easily. Making visual effects is an artistic process, so make sure at the end of this video, once you have this base effect, you spend a little bit of time playing around with it and make it your own. Uni provides us some samples that help us generate these procedural lines more easily. In our package manager, shader graph samples, make sure you've downloaded these procedural patterns. Once you've imported those, you'll get in your project panel, samples, shader graph, whatever version you have, and then procedural patterns. In here, we get several procedural patterns that we can use in any shader very easily. Today, we're most interested in stripes. With all of these patterns, you can do this yourself, but you have to have maybe some more nuanced understanding of how shaders work and how you could do these things. So it's nice to have these out of the box. You'll see that this stripes subgraph is using just standard nodes, rotate, tiling offset, fraction, and rectangle. So you could make this yourself if you wanted. The important piece here is we get these white and black stripes based on the thickness provided, the frequency, and also rotation controls how up and down they're going. So that should be pretty clear how we can make lines then. I'll close that and let's make a new shader graph. In your project panel, you can just right click, create shader graph, URP. And because this is gonna be an emissive effect, let's use a lit shader graph. And whatever we're doing today will also most likely work in built-in or HDRP as well. We call it something like ghost hologram and open that up. Let's see if our preview is going to work for us, maybe this time. In our graph inspector, there are a few things that we're going to want to do to make this look nice since we're adding transparency to potentially complex objects. First, we want to change our surface type to transparent. Render face front is most likely fine. Depending on your object, you may want it to be both. Depth right, we're going to want to force this on and depth test to be less. We'll take a look at these a little bit later to show why these are important. Most likely, we don't want to cast or receive shadows either. That's all we need to do on the graph. And in my effect, I wanted to still show the base map of the llama while I was having these lines go across them. Some holograms maybe you don't wanna do that with. So if not, you can skip this step. We'll start with adding a texture 2D called base map. Drag that in, take the output over to a sample texture 2D. Normally we just take this straight over to our base color and it would show up on our object. But we don't wanna do that exactly here. And actually just so we get a nice preview, I'm going to select my llama texture as the default. We're going to want to combine this with a multiply with whatever we're going to do up here with our tint. We have our procedural patterns, so we can do create node, patterns, simple, stripes. The stripes have all these inputs, frequency, offset, thickness, and rotation. So we can add all these as inputs to our blackboard so we can control them from the inspector. These are all float values as well. We can just drag those in and hook them up. Line thickness to the thickness, rotation to rotation, and frequency to frequency. But because these all have a zero default value, it ends up not doing anything. So let's add in some defaults. Line frequency to be six. Rotation we can leave at zero. And thickness maybe to be 0.33. Next, we're going to want to be able to tint these lines and possibly our texture by some color. So let's add that to our blackboard as well by adding a color tint. I'll use this semi-transparent blue with about 0.46 alpha. We multiply that with stripes. And then multiply this with our sample texture 2D multiply. It's not quite what we want, right? Because this is going to block out portions of our mesh and it's gonna have just black stripes. There's another node we can use called blend where if we take our sample texture 2D to be the base and our lines to be the blend, 
we can adjust the mode to get different looks. I found linear dodge works pretty well, but I'd want the base map to be tinted as well. So if we just pre-tint the texture by multiplying tint and our sample texture duty before it goes into the blend, now it's always this blue color and we have brighter lines on top. If we then take that blend output to the base color and then change our main preview to show instead of a sphere, our llama mesh, we can see how this is going to look. So we can tell our default rotation isn't going to work because we want the lines to go vertically. If we change it to about 122, it looks like it's going to go up the llama. Let's go ahead and rearrange this a little bit so it's a little bit less all over the place. And we may want to control the strength of this overlay. So we can add a float to our blackboard, maybe line strength. We'll give it a default of one, connect it to the blend opacity. And we can see as we lower that, the lines become less prevalent. And as we raise it, it becomes more prevalent. The only thing left to do is to make these move automatically to have the line effects looking great. And of course, we can always play with the thickness and all of that to make it look even better. If we manipulate the offset of the stripes, we're going to see that's how it can animate. So we just add a float scroll speed. I'll set it to negative one by default. This is the same as doing basically any scrolling UV. We take a scroll speed, multiply it with time, and then take it to our offset. And there we go, we have the scrolling lines. We need to control the alpha though, because this llama is still fully opaque. What I think the easiest way to do because we're mixing in our base map is not to split this last blend and take the alpha, but instead just to take our tint color alpha. So we take our tint color, take it to a split node, and then the alpha to the alpha. Our llama becomes transparent. And if we want them to be emissive, we can also take our blend to the emission. And since our preview is working, I think this is a great time before we add in any other effects like the edge glow to show why we want to have these depth test things set up. Back in the graph inspector in our graph settings, we can reset the defaults for our depth right back to auto and our depth test back to L equal. Remember, we changed these at the very beginning of making the shader. We can start seeing like the other legs through itself, which makes the effect look, I think, significantly worse. And we can see like the eyeballs and the tongue, all this kind of stuff. By setting the depth right to force enabled, you'll see that we're starting to get where these legs don't show through each other anymore. We can still see a little bit on these eyes and we see a little bit of that goes away as we set depth test to less. We get a lot better result where we're not looking through the mesh itself as much because of these two configurations. This does make it a more expensive shader, but we get a lot better look. Now let's look at how we can add in that edge glow. Like I said at the beginning of the video, this is called the Fresnel effect. There's a node that does basically all of this for us called the Fresnel effect. You can see the closer to the edge of the sphere we get to, the more wide it is. That's because the angle between the surface normal and our view direction is higher there. And that's really what the Fresnel effect does. So it tells us which areas on this mesh have a high angle between the surface normal and our view direction. And as we increase the power, it makes it where we need a higher and higher angle for it to be white. So we're probably going to want to be able to configure that in the inspector. Let's add a float for now strength and a float for now color. We'll set the strength to maybe something like two by default. And I'm going to use the same color as the tint or a similar one at least. And we might also want to make these HDR colors, both the tint and the Fresnel color. If we change the mode to HDR, we can amp up the intensity so the emission will be even cooler. We drag in the color and the strength. The strength goes to Fresnel power. We'll multiply the Fresnel effect with the color. And we don't want to multiply this with the blend. We're going to want to add to it. So we're going to take exactly what this is and then amplify the color at these edges using an add node. So we can see we retain the original stuff and then we add more at the edges. So if we replace our connections with blend with this add, we get that shiny ghost look. So maybe my color was amped up too much. That looks a little bit better. And we can group these together to have that for now being the edge glow, the base map here with the sample texture and our scan lines, this stripes bit down at the bottom. That sets up the shader. If we just save that asset, you can create a new material. In this case, I already had one. We can set it up to be our ghost hologram shader. 
Here are the values I eventually landed on, just playing with the material to see what looked nice. And importantly, in the game, we're also setting the color via a script. I went over that recently in another video in this series of videos where I'm covering a bunch of different aspects of how I made this free open source micro game, Chicken Defense. You can play it for free on itch and download the full project off from GitHub for free. Links in the description for both of those. Now those very astute of you may have noticed that these lines don't always go up and down. They're actually currently tied to the UVs. So in some parts of the mesh, we can see some really weird scan lines. Well, that's because our stripes subgraph is taking the default mesh UVs. To make this look a little bit better then, what we might do is down in the project panel, samples, shader graph, our version, procedural patterns. Let's just copy this subgraph, paste it into our shaders, and rename it screen UV stripes. And instead of using the default mesh UVs, let's use a screen position node. This way we're not gonna use the mesh's UV, but we're gonna instead rely on the position on the screen. Then our ghost hologram shader, we can just drag in that screen UV stripes and replace our normal stripes subgraph. We save that and take a look in the scene view. Now we can see across the whole mesh, these lines are just going straight up. I think that's where we're gonna leave this today. But of course, remember to take some time, play around with this, play with the configurations, maybe add in some new stuff to make this look really good in your game. If you want a more structured, in-depth approach to learning shaders and shader graph, I have a shader graph course where I partner with Game Dev TV. This teaches you the fundamentals of shader graph by example of some different environmental effects. I've got a link down in the description if you want to take that course. I hope you got a lot of value out of this video. And if you did, make sure that you've liked and subscribed to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. If you wanna show your support for the channel, there's a few ways you can do that. You can get some Mom Academy merch right here on YouTube. You can use the Asset Store and Humble Bundle affiliate link down in the description, or you can become a Patreon supporter or a YouTube member. Those last ones will get your name up here on the screen at the end of every video and a shout out starting at the awesome tier. At the awesome tier, there's Ivan, Ifiabolus, and Mustafa. There's also all of these great supporters as well. Thank you all for your support. I am so incredibly grateful.